Hi guys, Mastman here, and guess what? I am back with a new video, and today I'm going to be looking at the translation of shapes. So let's get right into this then. So what is translation? So translation is a maths word for sliding. Um, translation is when a shape slides from one place to another without rotating or flipping over. So before I get into my first example, if you don't know what coordinates are, then you might want to watch the video that I'm going to link above before watching this video. Also, as well, if you have some prior knowledge of translation, um, you might want to skip to the second half of this video where, it, um, where it's going to be more complicated because I'm going to start easy and get progressively harder. So let me show you a simple example of translation. Now, when translating a shape, you must find a vertex. A vertex is a mathematical word for a corner. So here I've put a cross on where there is a vertex. Now, in this example, it asked me to go three squares down and one square to the left. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go one, two, three down and one to the left. And that's where the new vertex will be after it's been translated. Then I find, and I'm going to use a different color for this, I'm going to find another vertex. So here's one. I'm going to go three down, one, two, three again, and one to the left. And I'll use a different color for, an, for the other vertex. So here it is. One, two, three down, one to the left. And then finally, the last vertex, one, two, three down, one to the left. Then once I've found where all the new ver vertices go, all I have to do is use a ruler to line them up. If you don't use a ruler, I'm sure your, uh, your teacher might be a little angry. Anyway, now the hardest thing with translation is um, understanding the coordinates. Now, to anyone who's ever done coordinates before, you may have been taught to go along the corridor, so that means horizontal, and then up the stairs. Now this first number, when looking at coordinates, means to go either sideways, so left or right, so horizontal. And the second number means to go up or down, or horizontal, okay? And I'm just going to come back to this. Now, this first question here, okay, it asks me to translate this shape minus 2, minus 3. And it's actually talking about this vertex here, and it's labeled P. So I need to find where P will be after it's been translated. Now, as we said about 30 seconds ago, the first number tells me if I'm going to be going left or right. Now, because it's negative 2, that means I'm going to be going left. So, P, I need to go minus 2. I need to go left by 2. So, 1, 2. So, that's where it is at the minute. This second number decides if I go up or down. And again, it's negative 3. It's a negative number, so that means I'm going to go down by 3. 1, 2, 3. So that is the new destination of P after it's been translated. Now, once I've translated that vertex, I should then be able to figure out where the new shape will be. Because I can see that above P... The line goes up 2, and to the left of P, it goes across 3. And I should be able to make my new shape. Now let's take a look at two examples here on the same piece of graph paper. So I'm going to look at vertex R first, and it's labelled over here. So the first number, and I'm going to use a different colour for this, the first number is minus 4. Now, don't forget, the first number decides if we go left or right. 
And because it's a negative number, that means I'm going to be going left again. So I'm going to go left by minus 4. So here's R. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's where R is at the minute. And the second number is a positive number this time. And the second number, don't forget, decides if we go up or down. Now, because it's a positive number, I'm going to be going up this time. So I'm going to go up two places. One, two. So I can tell you now that R is in that position. And if I've worked out where R is, I should be able to work out where the rest of the shape should go. Okay, by looking carefully at the original. When you translate, it must stay the exact same size as it was when you first translated it. And it should be the same direction too. We can't flip it. Let's take a look now at the last example, which is the S vertex. So, it asks us here, the first number decides again if we go left or right, and it's a positive number. So if it's a positive number, I'm going to be going right by 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the second number decides if we go up or down on the vertical plane. So it is minus 1. So if I go back to my guide, I can see that if it's a negative number, I'm going to be going down by 1. So that is the new position of S. And if I found the new position of S, I should be able to find the new position of the total shape. Now, the hardest that translation gets, really, is when you're working on a four-quadrant grid like this one. Okay, so I have two shapes here. Um, a triangle that has vertex Z on it and a square that has vertex T on it. Now, in today's video, I don't have enough time, really, to go through this. If you would like me to do translation on a four-quadrant grid, then please leave me a comment down below. And if I get enough comments, then I will make one. Um, but other than that, what you might want to do is pause the video here, get some graph paper, and have a go at doing this yourself. Um, and that would be a good test to see if you've understood today's video. Now, again, if you did understand... Uh, if you did like today's video, then please leave me a big thumbs up down below. And if you'd like more free maths videos uh, to do with Key Stage 2, then you know what to do. You've just got to go and hit the subscribe button. And hopefully I will have you uh, knocking maths straight out of the park. Thanks again for watching.